The greatest institution that I believe has failed America is the church. Yes, government's failed. Yes, corporate America's failed. Yes, education system failed. All those are real. But we claim to walk in and to be the voice of Christ in the world, to be the voice for the poor and the disenfranchised. And I really believe that church has become another Fortune 500 company. Um, it is now part of the problem rather than part of the solution. And we forget that our voice is to be a voice of conscience. You know, we need to be asking the questions nobody else asks. We need to be raising issues. We need to be challenging. Um, we need to be put, sitting at, at tables where, from where we're not invited and, and demanding that, we, that at those tables we speak for the poor and, and for the forgotten. You know, my parents always valued speaking what you believed. They always demanded me to say what I thought, you know. Now, I had to defend it. You could never just say it and drop a statement. Okay, what do you mean by that? Uh, why do you think that? My parents really taught me to, to be vocal about that beyond the house. Dr. King said one time, you know, the greatest evil is not those who speak it, it's those who stay silent and don't speak against it. Over the years, I fought issues. I've been threatened. I've been spit on. I've been physically jumped. I sacrificed my family who thought I was too in love with black people and too challenging to white people. I've lost um, opportunities and relationships, you know, when the whole, you know, campaign of uh, Barack Obama, when, you know, when I spoke up regarding the whole Hillary Clinton thing and, and I apologized for my mannerisms of getting carried away, but I, you know, was very clear that I'm not going to apologize for entitlement and speaking about white entitlement. I think Christ gave us the best model for ministry in the world. And uh, you look at his the Gospels and you look at the Acts of the Apostles onward and you see a real model for ministry that I think we've lost today. And I think Dr. King took that ministry and in the 20th century gave, a, gave it again and showed us a blueprint. He saw church as the huddle time. You know, you come to a huddle, you pray, you sing songs, you get a word, you get direction, and then you're sent out with instructions to change. You know, I think sometimes we look at church in a church in the world today as that's the be all and the end all. No, church is the huddle time. Nobody goes to a, a football game to see the huddle. They go to see what do they do when they come out of the huddle on the field. And the same thing with church. What gives us credibility and makes us authentic is what we do when we leave those church doors. And I tell people all the time that what you do at your job, your home, your block, your community, your neighborhood, you see, well, how we live our lives is what makes us Christians, not of going to a Christian church on Sunday. The other second part of it, though, is, is to understand that everybody that sits in that pew is the leader. I'm not looking to be a leader and have a bunch of followers. I'm looking to train up a bunch of leaders because every day you should be a leader in wherever you're at, in your job, in your home, in your family, with your conversations, with your relationships. In other words, places should be different because you're there. Wherever you go, things should change. And if they don't, then what, what was your purpose? If God woke you up this morning and gave you breath, then there's something you're supposed to do today. Don't waste the breath.